this video will be about all the different ways to factor. So when you are factoring, it helps to first start with greatest common factor, which we often say GCF. The greatest common factor is backwards distribution. So let's look at the distribution process and then see how to do it backwards. Let's say I have 2x times x squared plus 5x minus 1. We're going to distribute the 2x in. That means we're going to multiply every single term by 2x. So we would have 2x times x squared. That will give us 2x to the third. Then we multiply again. 2x times 5x would give us 10x squared. And finally, 2x times negative 1 would give me negative 2x. So greatest common factor is doing this process backwards. It's actually a form of division, just like distribution is a form of multiplication. So when we are doing greatest common factor, it's saying 2x to the third plus 10x squared minus 2x. Take it back to a distribution problem. Get it some parentheses. So when we do greatest common factor, we think to ourselves, what divides into each term? And we have to be even a little more specific not just what divides, what's the biggest thing that divides into each term? Because sometimes there's multiple things that would divide into each term. So looking at each number, 2, 10, and 2, it helps to start with actually the smallest number because if we have something bigger than 2, it's definitely not going to divide into 2. So looking at 2, the only thing that divides into 2 is 2 or 1. We look at 10, the biggest number is 2, 2 will also divide into 10. So all of these would divide by a 2. That is the biggest number that would divide into each of them. You also have to check the variables. They all contain x's. Again, we start with the smallest one and see what's the biggest thing that can divide into the smallest term. So here, smallest term is x. We have x to the third, x to the squared. Those are bigger than just plain old x. The only thing that could divide into x is x itself or a 1. And we want the bigger one. x is considered bigger in this case than 1. So we divide each of those now by 2x. Now even though we're using it three times, think back to the distribution process. This one term was used three times to multiply. So that one thing goes out front, even though it's going to be used to, vi to divide into three things. So we do the actual division. 2 divided by 2 is 1. x cubed divided by x is x squared. So we have 1x squared. We don't usually write the 1 in front of the x. 10 divided by 2 is 5. It was a plus sign, so we keep it plus 5. x squared divided by x is x. 2 divided by 2 is 1 again. x divided by x is also 1. So we're left with a 1. So on every single factoring problem, even if you could maybe factor further, you need to always check for a greatest common factor. So after greatest common factor, the next basic form of factoring is based off of foiling. So basic factoring. So when they say the word factoring, there's a lot of different things it could mean. Starting with the first kind, though, is based off of foiling stuff out. So when we FOIL, again, we're multiplying multiple times. x times x is x squared. x times 3 is 3x. Three 2 times x, oops, sorry. 
2 times x is 2x, and 2 times 3 is 6. Now in this case, there are like terms we can combine. 3x plus 2x is 5x. So factoring again is backwards of this. So again, it's a form of division because foiling is a form of multiplication. Factoring says start with this and take it back to the original. So let's think about how we got these numbers. I got the number 6 by timesing 2 times 3. So this number 6 was formed by multiplying 2 times 3. I got the 5x by adding a 3x plus 2x. So they're related. They each contain a 2 and a 3. And we had to figure out, oh, they multiply to the last thing but add to the middle thing. So that's going to be our pattern for factoring. If I start you out with a random problem, we knew what it was before because we had foiled it out already. Here, when we're just starting with numbers, we don't know what they're going to be that needs to multiply to 30 and add to be negative 7. So we have to try a couple of things. So our rule for factoring this is it has to multiply to negative 30, but add to be negative 7. So things that multiply to be negative 30. Well, I'm going to just make a list. And we always start with multiply because there's less options. I could do 1 times negative 30 to get negative 30, 2 times negative 15, or 3 times negative 10. Oh, almost missed one, 5 times negative 6. Now the negative signs could also change. I could do negative 1 times 30, negative 2 times negative 15, or positive 15, negative 2 times positive 15, negative 3 times 10, negative 5 times 6. Now we also need only one of these groups to add to be negative 7. So we're going to have to try them all until we find the right one. If I do 1 plus negative 30, that gives me negative 29. That is not what I want. It should have equaled negative 7. If I do 2 plus negative 15, I get negative 13. Also not what I want. 3 plus negative 10 gives me negative 7. There we are. We're good to go. So if you can figure it out without making the entire list, that's also fine. I just wanted to show you this is what we can do. And if everything on the list crosses out, let's say none of them worked, then it's possible that it doesn't factor at all. So we found these two numbers, a 3 and a negative 10. Now I'm going to show you the original problem again. This 2 and 3 we found that made each of these numbers, it was the last number in each parenthesis. So that's what's going to happen with our factoring. We're going to put those two numbers we found in the end of each parenthesis, a positive 3 and a negative 10. And then x squared, when you break it down into multiplication, is x times x, just like how we broke 30 down into multiplication. So each of those have to be an x. So there is our second type of factoring. The third type of factoring is factoring by grouping. So when we are factoring by grouping, and with any type of factoring, we should always check for a greatest common factor, which I forgot to check on the last one because I knew there wasn't one, but you should always check just to be safe. So looking at this, I say, is there anything that divides into all three, or all four, this in this case, terms? Well, they don't all have letters. 45 has no letter next to it, so there aren't going to be any variables involved. But they can all divide by a number. In this case, I'm going to start with 6. Things that divide into 6 are 1, 2, 3, and 6. So I'm going to check and see, does 6 divide into all this other stuff? I'm going to pick 9. Does 9 divide by 6? We want the biggest, so I'm going to start with the biggest and go down. 
I divide 9 by 6, I get 1.5. We don't want decimals. So I got go down one. 3 was the next number. Does 9 divide by 3? It does. What about 30? That also does. 45 also does. So they all divide by 3. So we have the 1, 3 out front. We do the division to get the inside. 6 divided by 3 is 2. We leave the x cubed with it. 30 divided by 3 is 10. 9 divided by 3 is 3. And 45 divided by 3 is 15. So the second thing we need to do when we're factoring by grouping. Notice now we have four terms. The last type of factoring we only had three. If there's four terms, it's either not possible to factor or we can factor by grouping. So when we look at our factoring by grouping, we look at the first two terms and the last two terms separately. And we want to GCF the first two terms only. So what divides into both 2x to the third and 10x squared? 2 is the smallest number. So things that divide into 2 are 1 and 2. The highest there will divide into 10, so both of them divide by 2. x cubed and x squared. x squared is the smallest. And whatever the smallest variable is, is what our greatest common factor is going to be. So we still have a 3 from our original greatest common factor. Then just of the first two, we have a 2x squared. And we divide. 2 divided by 2 is 1. x cubed divided by x squared is x. 10 divided by 2 is 5. x squared divided by x squared is 1. But you technically have 5 times 1. And we just don't need to write times 1 in because 5 times 1 is 5. Now we check the next one. What divides into 3x and 15? That would be a 3, so we have plus 3. And we're left with x minus 5. So we greatest common factored the first two terms, then we greatest common factored the last two terms. So again, that 3 at the very beginning, it's just going to stay part of the problem. And now we have to figure out, what is this going to turn into? Well, you may notice that we have two matching parentheses. Just like up here, we had two things that we could divide by that were, there, were the same, or two numbers over here we could divide by that were the same. That's the same idea. x minus 5 is the same. It is actually a greatest common factor. So we're dividing both of those by x minus 5. And that thing that matched went out front. When we do our division, those will cancel out because x minus 5 divided by x minus 5 is 1. So we're just left with the numbers in front, 2x squared plus 3. And that will be our final answer. So next, we can have factoring where there's only three terms, but there will be a number in front of the x squared. So on this one, 6x squared minus 7x minus 5. The process is a little bit different, um, and it's something you just kind of have to memorize. Okay, this is how I do it. So first we check for a greatest common factor. What divides into both 6, 7, and 5? 5 is the smallest, and the only thing that divides into 5 is 5 and 1. I look at 7. 7 does not divide by 5. It will divide by 1, and 6 will divide by 1. So if 1 is our greatest common factor, we skip it. If it's just a 1, we can move on. So next on this one, we have to times the first term by the last term. So the first term would be our 6x squared. The last term would be our negative 5. Now, if there had been no 6 in front of the x squared, we could just do what we did um, two problems ago. But since there is a number in front of the x squared, we have to go through this longer process. 
If I multiply this out, 6x squared times negative 5 is negative 30x squared. And now the process here will be similar to what we did two types of factoring ago, where we have to figure out what multiplies to be this negative 30x squared and adds to be the negative 7x. So find numbers that times to be step 2, but add, well, I'm going to say, but also add to the middle term. Again, we may need to make a list. But if we can figure it out right off the bat, we don't necessarily have to make the full list. So you may recognize, and I didn't do this on purpose, it just kind of happened accidentally. You may recognize, hey, we did this two problems ago, so it's kind of fresh in my mind. And I remember a 10 and a 3 being involved. So let's try 10 times negative 3. If I add them, though, that's going to give me a positive 7. That's a problem. This is a negative 7. So, let's just switch the signs and see if that works. Negative 10 times 3, negative 10 plus 3, is negative 7. So there are our numbers. Now we also notice that there's an x squared. x squared can break down to be x times x. So really, we have negative 10x plus 3x. And the reason we need this is because we're going to actually write out that middle term, negative 7, as negative 10x plus 3x. We're going to split that negative 7 up. The reason we want to do this is because now we can do factoring by grouping. That's what we did on our last type of factoring. So if we're going to factor by grouping, we look at just the first two. What divides into 6 and into 10? The biggest number that would divide into both of those is 2. They both include a variable, and the smallest one is just x. So they both divide by 2x, which would leave us with 3x minus 5. The last two, 3 and 5, 3 the only things that divide into it are 3 and 1. So the biggest thing that divides into both of those is 1. Now on step 1 I said if, if the greatest common factor is 1, skip it. But that is not true for grouping. For grouping, we're okay if it's a 1. But when we divide by 1, it's just going to stay the same. So now when we were factoring by grouping, we noticed these two were the same. That's what goes first. We only need one of them. Just like up here, even though there were two 2x's, when we got to the grouping step, or the factoring step, we only had one 2x in front of the parentheses. And then what's in front of the parentheses becomes your second parenthesis. Okay, so I know there's a lot of factoring we've done so far, but we're still not done. There's just quite a few ways to factor. Next is called difference of squares. This is specifically used when you have two parentheses that almost match exactly, except one had a plus and one had a minus sign. So if we were to foil this out, 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times negative 5 is negative 10x, 5 times 2 is 10x, and 5 times 5 is negative 25. Our 10x is cancel. We have 4x squared minus 25. So notice we're down to two terms. So when we have two terms, it could be just a greatest common factor problem only, but we should keep in mind that it might be a difference of squares problem. And we're going to want to try and get it back to this original. So looking at 4x squared, if we want to get it back to a 2x and a 2x, those have to match. So we're looking for two things multiplied together to equal 4x squared that match exactly. Same thing with the 25. 
the two numbers matched, and we need two things that multiply to be 25, but that are the same number. So let's try one from the beginning. Say so we have 18x squared minus 98. So when we have this, always check for greatest common factor first. Looking at this, those will both divide by the number 2. I forgot to put it out front with the parentheses. So 2 out front, parentheses, 18 divided by 2 is 9, 98 divided by 2 is 49. So that was our greatest common factor. Now we're going to do that difference of squares process. I need to figure out things that multiply to be 9 that match exactly. If I can't find numbers that match exactly for both of them, then this process will not work. So things that multiply to be 9 are 3. Also there's the x squared, so 3x, 3x, those match, so we are good to go. We look at 49 things that multiply to be 49. Could do 1 times 49, and it's a negative 49, so 1 times negative 49. Or we could do 7 times negative 7. So these ones, we're fine with the signs being different, but the numbers both need to be 7s. So now we can write it in our factored format. So we used the two numbers that went with the first term, first in each parenthesis, and the two that went with the last term, last in each parenthesis. So there is our difference of squares. So now the very last fact, type of factoring I'm going to talk about is difference of cubes or sums of cubes. This one is seen the least often. Um, you probably won't see it until Algebra 2 at the earliest, or possibly pre-calculus at the earliest. So if you haven't seen it, or if you're not in one of those higher classes, you may just want to stop watching now, because it won't necessar be necessary. So difference and sums of cubes. This one is a specific format. If, I've, if I have a to the third minus b to the third. So a to the third could be an actual number or it could be a variable like 8x to the third this would still be considered something that could go with this formula because 8 could be written as 2 times 2 times 2 or 2 to the third so it's not just variables it could be numbers as well but what this would equal would be a minus b times a squared plus a times b plus b squared. And if it had been a plus instead, it would be a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. So the way we use that is we're given a problem where we have to figure out Okay, what is a, what is b? So let's start with that 8x to the third minus one hundred and twenty-five y to the third. So we have to check and see if these numbers would actually work. x to the third is fine, y to the third is fine, because we know it's already raised to the third. We know 8 can be 2 times 2 times 2, or 2 to the third. So really, this is 2x to the third, because they were both raised to the third. So you can actually combine them together. 125. Well, it ends in 5, so I'm going to make a guess that 5 might be our number that could multiply. So if I do 5 times 5 times 5, 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 one more time is 125. So this is really 5 to the third. And again, you can write it together as 5y to the third. That means the 2x inside is a, and the 5y inside is b. So we can go write this out now, what it would equal. 
we had a plus b. So a, we said was 2x. Oh, sorry, I'm using the wrong one. We're doing minus this time. It's the same process, um, just the signs are different. So a, still 2x, minus b, which is 5y. a squared is going to be the whole thing, 2x squared plus a times b. a was 2x, b was 5y, plus b squared, so all of b squared. Now we do need to do some simplification. The first parenthesis is fine, but 2x squared, both of them get squared. 2 squared is 4, x squared is just x squared. We can multiply this together, 2 times 5 is 10xy. And 5 squared is 25, y squared just remains y squared. So that covers a lot of situations. There may still be some other situations you come up against that don't quite fit into any of these molds. You just kind of have to keep working through and trying these problems a lot of different ways if you can't figure it out the first time. Factoring has so many options that it can be a little bit difficult sometimes to figure out what option to use and when to use it. But you can try a whole bunch of different ways to see which one would be the correct answer. So that concludes our discussion of factoring.